Ngwe. Right on the program, we get to bring various topical issues on the table just to try and dissect them and make sense out of them. Tonight on the program, we are putting on the table matters governance and of course, an analysis show like no other. I'll be introducing my panelists in just a while, but I want to let you know that this show is interactive. All you need to do is tweet us and add the hashtag in focus rw when you add that particular hashtag it makes it easier for me to simply just follow that particular hashtag and we'll be able to sample some of your tweets right here in the course of the program so do tweet us and be able to add the hashtag in focus rw and of course in the course of the program we'll be able to sample them like this one here already coming through edward cardozi says development comes with increasing public demands and expectations apparently the preparedness of low Local government lags behind with these increasing uh, uh, development and expectations. Local government needs to be uh, capacitated to be able to meet the public service delivery. Of course, this is one of the items we're talking about tonight on the program. So do tweet us and add the hashtag in focus RW. That is the only hashtag we're actually following tonight. You don't have to mention me in your tweets or any other person. Just add hashtag in focus RW and we'll be able to follow uh, your tweets in the course of the program let me bring on board our panelists on the program we have dr frank havineza the democratic green party of rwanda thank you for joining us on the program it's a pleasure thank always you. a pleasure having you on the show mm -hmm. also with us is dr lonzen rujira coming back on the show uh, earlier before we went on air you guys were talking about how he is a bad omen and actually <laughs> he predicted in a way that made it difficult for the green party to actually carry the day We'll talk about that in the course of the show. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Lonson Karibu on the he program. He thinks the reason he lost. He says that. Yeah, yeah. it caused bad omens. He, 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 he gave you bad luck. We'll be able to talk about that right on the program. And of course, also with us is Dr. Usta Kaitesi, the Deputy Director General of uh, the Rwanda Governance Board. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, too. I sit here knowing that any time you might actually take over this show. <laughs> From if you your please. Prowess. If you please. If I please. Eh? From your prowess of moderating panels, I've watched you and you do an amazing job. Thank you for joining us on the program. Yeah. Right, so we have, uh, let's say, like three or four items on the agenda to mm. talk about tonight on the program. Of course, all of them uh, anchored on, uh, 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 you know, public governance. And one of the things that I want us to look at, first of all, we cannot run away from it. We've had conversation around this, but we will not dwell on it too much. But it is the issue of the deaths that have, that have been coming up from the disasters we've been seeing. The rains, uh, heavy rains, year in, year out. We keep seeing some of these uh, things happening. But I want us to hear from a governance perspective. Uh, Dr. Frank, uh, as a person coming from the Greens, some people are concerned that they have not even had any statement, any public uh, call. Mm on these matters of environment, mm. you know, that is causing these heavy rains and the floods. Mm. Why? Yeah, it's not by accident. Why? Because we have already put that in our manifesto. Mm -hmm. And we talked so much about it so many times. Mm -hmm. Until uh, you gave up, like, you, we don't want to no, talk about it this time. No, because we have, uh, we, have, we have outlined things which we thought if the government ha could have done them, things would have been better. Mm -hmm. We've talked much about Nyabogogo. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about much about floodings. We've talked much about uh, land uh, slidings. We've talked a lot about them. And we have published so many things about them. Mm -hmm. So now we said, let's first see what, what everything we have said, everything we have advised the government. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they're going to do. What are they doing about this? So now you're so, proving them right that we told you and you did not do it. And so you're just sitting back. Yeah, so now wanted to first, because sometimes we may think that the people we tell are not hearing. Maybe they are hearing. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are a lot of actions that are taking place, but there are some things uh, where we are very concerned that uh, it looks like the Ministry of Disaster Preparedness always acts at the last hour, mm -hmm. at the 11th hour. Mm -hmm. So we know from, yeah, from January to December, we know very well the months uh, where we have much rains. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know we have already, uh, they have already highlighted uh, places which are high risk zones in the country, uh, in those houses near the hills or near the, the, and actually they have even put on some marks, tower, like mm. they should remove, mm. but they don't remove them. Why? Maybe there's not enough uh, budget for that or to settle in people from, to other places. Mm. So we think now, uh, Things should move away from plans mm. to actions. Plans to actions. Yeah. Let's hear Dr. Lonzen. I mean, your take on this. I mean, he says they've spoken about this many times, uh, and, and nothing maybe has not been done, uh, or something has been done out of that, that talk, 
but they want to move from plans to action. This is what he says. Well, uh, the part of what uh, Dr. Havineza is saying <coughs> is uh, reasonable and he's correct. The other part is wrong. Mm -hmm. Which part is he correct? Which the part, is part wrong? where he's correct is about, there are two aspects to, about uh, disaster. And there's the natural aspect where you have very little to do about. And there's the governance aspect mm -hmm. where you have mitigation uh, mechanisms mm -hmm. to inter, inter, intervene. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when he talks about, when we talk about the governance aspect, and that's where he's talking about the mobilization and, and be, uh, the ability to predict mm. uh, these uh, disasters. natural disasters mm. and, and to put in place mechanisms to respond, uh, then the problem that I have with his intervention is that he, he, he shifts responsibility elsewhere. And him as a leader in this country, Green Party, with the, a platform that uh, should be square uh, and center uh, in, 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 um, in providing the, the leadership around this, the, the idea that he wants to shift this responsibility to government, even though government should be responsible, but in his position, in his capacity, we expect something. So Dr. Aveneza needs to come out of his manifesto and, like he said, go on the ground and be uh, in, in, in the areas where the natural disasters are taking place. Be with the people. Mm. He needs the votes mm. and the elections are coming up and mm. he's not there. Mm. And he's talking about not being in touch with the reality of the ground and he's not. And that's the part that I have problems with him. <laughs> but the rest of it is, is, is rather... <laughs> it's Let's hear from Dr. Usta. I mean, it's, it's only fair that we all have a round and yes. then we'll come back around okay. to mm. Dr. Usta. Uh, Dr. Aveneza feels that on the governance part, there's been a failure. Uh, uh, you know, in actually mitigating these uh, disasters out of the rains that we see annually, year in, year out. We seem to be acting rather than preventing. Uh, yet we know that these seasons come and go every year, every, uh, you know, year in, year out. Well, I think um, the nature of the disaster themselves determine the, na the character of, uh, of preparedness. You know, um, the extent that it goes sometimes is what makes it a disaster mm -hmm. naturally. So I would say that uh, there is preparedness, but also um, climate change is for real. You know, we, we will do a lot of things. We are trying to mitigate climate change as a nation and as a, uh, as a group, but in reality, things turn around very differently. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I should mention that we have been on the field for quite a while. We, we, are, during, we are now doing the CRC, which mm -hmm. takes us a, a lot in the village. Mm -hmm. And we found villages where people have been vacated. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a perspective of how much we have had that have been affected directly by the disaster. Mm -hmm. But we do not necessarily, uh, we are not yet able to report how much we have protected and how much we have saved. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I, I would definitely say that we need to be proactive, much more proactive. Mm -hmm. um, the extent of the disaster is very uh, unpredictable, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it a disaster. Mm -hmm. But I think I would like to agree that uh, uh, dealing with a disaster is not a manifesto thing. Right. Dealing with a disaster is an emergency thing mm -hmm. and is a humanitarian thing. That concerns so everybody. I, I would like really to say, uh, while the government is doing whatsoever it's doing, it's every citizen's responsibility to indeed save lives mm -hmm. and, uh, and be the guardians of one another mm -hmm. when disaster breaks. So. Right. Uh, Dr. Avinez, I mean, Lonzen also says it, that you are actually missing out on opportunities where you could have actually been able to reach out to the people, but you are holed up, like Dr. Uster says, in your manifesto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's not uh, correct. Uh, what, what we are trying to say is that, uh, well, I agree that it's everyone's responsibility to help when you can, whatever we can. But uh, we have a government in charge, which has even budget, which has even a ministry, which has money. And there are other institutions surrounding the ministry which could as well help, like the national police, like the army, like the... There are other institutions in place which could help when we have disasters. So I think the first problem we have at the moment is that there have been a lot of plans, a lot of talk, but without, with less action. Mm -hmm. So let's ask... Uh, do a proper preparedness plan and uh, make sure that whatever we have said, uh, like those people who are living in what they call them in, 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 in those high risk zones, let 
Let, uh, let the government find new homes for them or new places for them. Let there be a budget. And we solve that at least for once. Mm. Then we deal with catastrophes where we cannot manage. But there are things really we can manage. There are people who are being washed away by these floods, by these rains. Where we could have done something. Mm. Look at the roads uh, here, there's a road in, uh, in Gachenge, mm. uh, whereby it, people, those who are constructing, they didn't even put some trenches where water could pass. Uh, so basically, you construct a road, you don't put up in a trench, and you remove all the, this da, uh, soil, you put it actually on people's houses, and that soil is the one which takes away people's houses and, and their lives. So basically, you wonder where are these people who are in charge of controlling all this? Mm. There's, there is something government has to do to mm. do mm. before we come to help, because you come to help, but we, we are not stronger than the government. The government, it is, it is responsibility to protect lives, to protect mm. people. Mm. This is the, the main, main responsibility of the government. So basically, whoever wants to come, you can come but you, to help, but first let the government do what it's supposed to do, mm -hmm. and then other people can join in. We have Red Cross who can join in, everybody can join in. Mm -hmm. But has government done its part? So before it does its part, then the rest cannot no, do anything? No, we can, but we are not stronger than it. Mm -hmm. we, like, even in my neighborhood here in Kigali, we saw rains coming, washing away, even some parts of the roads, and so basically there's been some poor planning, mm -hmm. infrastructure, planning, there's a problem. Right. Uh, Dr. Lonson. Now, um, Dr. Havinez uh, is talking about, uh, is mixing many things that I think should be separated. Mm -hmm. um, even though I have a problem with him not taking responsibility, because in politics, if you want to win uh, access power, you have to take leadership in certain areas that are, you are passionate towards. And the Greens are passionate towards the environment. And if they're absent in that leadership, then where else are they going to get their votes? Mm -hmm. Now, the issues that he is conflating, and I think it is a bit disingenuous, there are structural pro problems to this uh, uh, a disaster management problem. And these have to do with the nature of uh, the, 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 the geographical uh, uh, situation of the country. You know, we are a hilly country, Mount, uh, and, and people uh, have been living on these hills for quite some time. And the resources necessary to shift them from those hills to urban planning, we, we already know the challenges that are, are facing, uh, the country is facing in terms of uh, uh, housing and so on. So the, that is a, 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 the kind of resources needed to move those people into those kind of settlements is very uh, a, a serious structural problem. And as a responsible leader of a political party, he needs to deal with it much more seriously than the casual manner with which he's dealing with it. And I think it's dangerous and sends the wrong message. Mm. Uh, and point number two is, uh, is uh, the once you remove the structural challenges, there are the immediate concerns when disaster has taken place. And this is when you see RDF, the Rwandan police, and, and all these stakeholders rushing in. And they are rushing in because there is the immediate uh, humanitarian disaster that is taking place. Mm. And the nature of their mandates requires them to have this immediate response, response as yes. opposed to the structural challenges mm. that have to do. You've seen the roads breaking mm. Uh, mm. in half and so mm. on. Mm. That's a structural challenge. Mm. And, and you, you may talk about the importance of, of planning in terms of uh, envisaging the potential for these roads breaking apart and so on. And, and you, you consider that into the, 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 the improving planning. That aspect is fine. Mm. But, but I think it's mi mixing many things and it is creating a, 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 it is a disingenuous. I also add a little bit uh, about uh, Dr. Eusta. There's something that I, I disagree with her and I think it's also very important mm. that I air it. Mm. The idea that because there is global warming taking place that we should shift responsibilities, I disagree with. Mm -hmm. Now, there is global warming, it is taking place, but when you look at in other places, for instance, where you see Kenya, the Patel Bridge, the Patel Dam, mm. the breakdown, there had been clear indications that this dam was built in such a way that it would cause disaster mm -hmm. to the population living around there. So now, once the dam broke, they blamed it on, on environmental, uh, on, on global warming. Mm -hmm. And I think once we begin to make ex excuses about disasters, to link them to global warming, we are going to miss an opportunity to prevent people from facing the kind of challenges they are facing. That they are facing, I mean, Dr. <laughs> 
that's a very serious allegation that you're actually trying to shift blame on global warming and this would actually make it difficult for, I mean, would make it easy for those responsible to take responsibility when they have to. I mean, as citizens who are expecting their lives to be protected uh, by their governments, by the people who are protecting them and they're not and we're shifting blame to global warming, What's your take on that? Well, I should say that it wasn't shifting blame at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. It was taking cognizance of the, re of the realities that we are in. Now, that allows us to plan differently. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. We need to plan differently and be aware that uh, maybe the things as usual are not going to be as usual as we are used to them. Mm -hmm. So in this regard, I'm not t taking away the shift, actually, but I'm trying to say that um, Rwanda and many other places are now required to be more prepared, but also they, there is a greater need to invest in the, in, in the apparatus that is going to make us actually be able to detect certain, uh, certain calamities that we are not able to detect earlier. Right. I wanted also to mention a little bit on, um, I also don't want to, to assume, for example, the road in Gachenye. The road in Gachenye is a landslide matter. Now, when landslides happen, it's not about the road where it is. Actually, it is the hill where, uh, or the hill or the mountain where the, where the road is part of the neighborhood. So it, the presumption that it was a failure, I think, is a wrong presumption. The fact that landslides happen, you know, we have a road uh, that is totally blocked uh, on, on the Ugandan side. And it's just, uh, I think, like he was saying, it's just more the, the geographical character mm. and the wetness that this so much rain is bringing on, the, on these on these mountains or hills. So some of that is very real, that, and we, we do not already have the capacity to measure how much rain has been retained by those hills. Mm. And therefore, by the time we, we don't even expect it, it's not actu it doesn't actually happen because that day it was raining so much. Mm. It happens because there, were, there has been a lot of retention of the waters, mm. and eventually the, 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 the landslides happen. Yeah. So in, it, it's, I think, we have to be conscious that the weather is no longer the same in many ways. And plan accordingly. And plan to accordingly. Right. We, we have to plan for the droughts because right. they will come right. anyway. Right. We will have to plan for the too much rains because they have uh, actually been a reality in mm. our mm. environment. Mm. Dr. Lonzen is, is pointing an accusing finger at Dr. Abineza that he is actually running away from responsibility. What sort of responsibility can the government take from a governance point of view on what has been happening from these disasters? Well, it's, it's, a, it's the responsibility of the government uh, to, be, to, to create a secure environment for the people. That is the governance priority. In Rwanda, governance is people-centered. We lead for the people. That is a requirement. And therefore, uh, the, the governance um, requirements are to be able to move people to a safer zone. Mm -hmm. And I think that is already in plan and in action in certain areas. I think he's recognized that it's, it's, not, uh, it's not, you cannot just do it immediately, you do it progressively, but also you have to be prepared in cases of emergency. Mm -hmm. And I think what we are seeing now is circumstances of emergency. Mm -hmm. The ministry in charge has been very active, but beyond the ministry, we saw the prime minister going out uh, to reach out for the people. We've seen the police during the, uh, the police week engaging, and we've, we've seen the army quite well. It's to remember that we cannot aff afford to lose anyone in this process. Right. And in case there is a loss, government has taken responsibility as well. Right. I think you remember when we had the, th uh, the thunderstorms, mm -hmm. it was the government that took uh, entire responsibility even uh, in how those people were particularly buried. Right. Let's move the conversation a bit forward and, and, and talk about what took place in this country a few weeks ago, the Mo Ibrahim uh, Governance Weekend. Uh, Dr. Uste, you're part of it. I don't know if you were in town. Did you participate? Yes, I was in town, but I was not invited. You were not invited. Mm. If, you were, if you had been invited, what sort of contribution? Um, first of all, people were asking, why did Mo Ibrahim choose Rwanda? Mm -hmm. That was the question. Many Are you one of those people who was asking that? And I was one of the people who were asked, actually. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I was asked by the German broadcaster, Deutsche Welle. Mm -hmm. uh, well, me, I thought perhaps it was uh, uh, because uh, our president is now president of African Union. Mm -hmm. 
So that could have been one of the reasons why he chose Rwanda. Mm -hmm. I don't know other reasons why they chose Rwanda. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I think uh, most one of the problems uh, uh, they were giving this prize to Aaron mm -hmm. Johnson, mm -hmm. yes. the former li Liberian, yeah. Liberian president, uh, as someone who uh, gave power, uh, got power democratically and democratically, mm -hmm. which is a good encouragement to all African leaders. So I think that uh, I appreciate Mo Ibrahim's uh, uh, contribution, encouraging African leaders to uh, get power in democratic uh, means and leave power also democratically, not to wait until people uh, chase them away. So that one, I do support that. Mm. So you're looking at it from the perspective of this is sort of encouraging them to leave power because they're going to get money no not no don't don't it's not about money but it's leaving a good legacy behind mm -hmm. uh, because uh, well i think the money is not so big for the presidents but it's also an encouragement that if you leave power peacefully you get power democratically that's the number one thing mm -hmm. you get it democratically so mm -hmm. this also helps uh, let's say the younger leaders or the upcoming leaders to know that uh, uh, we should avoid getting power through illegal means mm -hmm or an democratic means, mm. because you know that uh, at the end of the day, there will be no appreciation or you have no good legacy. So that's one part. Mm. We we'll talk about those who are going, but also those who are incoming. Mm. So I think it's a good encouragement to us who want to get power, mm. that we should use democratic means, uh, because then we'll have a good legacy when we'll be remembered. Right. And uh, those who are there, also to remember that it's better you go in a democratic way so that you can be remembered well, mm. so that you don't wait people to push you away or uh, or to cling on power, and then you have problems for your, yourself and even for your people. And your, and your people and your mm. legacy. Dr. Lonsen, did you follow? I'm sure you... I was there. You were uh, there, yeah, I indeed. Was there. Mm. Uh, I, I want to read your thoughts. First of all, as you, as yeah. you add what you just want to say, Dr. Moore had to actually explain uh, in some interviews, uh, uh, you know, because even in one of the conversations I had with him, he had to say that some people over years had thought that we are against some governments. He had to actually clarify that we are not, uh, uh, you know, against people staying longer in power, but we are against people abusing uh, uh, power. Uh, and, and, and people are asking themselves, what has changed? Because sometimes ago, people were saying that this leader who just bribes African leaders to leave office, this is what Mo Ibrahim had as far as his reputation was concerned around town. Did you also... That, did that also ring in your mind that what has changed that now more is, 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 is part of all this? Kind well, of well, um, first of all, there's no need to speculate about that because more when he was introducing the winner of the Mo Ibrahim Prize, he said why they came to Rwanda. Uh, now, if you're going to speculate, then you are speculating against what the guy mm -hmm. said himself. Him, yeah, so you'd have uh, other reasons to speculate. Mo said that he came to Rwanda because. Salif Johnson requested that the prize should be given to her in an environment like Rwanda where women have been uh, empowered and looking at the par parliament and, and the, 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 the social and economic and political context, the environment was conducive for women's empowerment mm. and she wants to identify herself with that. That's the reason she chose Rwanda. Now, uh, Dr. Havineza is conflating, conflating two matters, mm. and, and, and I think I need to also point that out. He's conflating the idea that leaving the presidency equates to leaving behind a good legacy. Mm. These are two um, issues that are not the same, mm. because they are similar does not make it the same. Mm. Uh, now... Also, another thing that I think uh, Dr. Abineza is not correct about is that this award is not given to someone who has left power. It's not, it's not a matter of, of leaving power. Uh, at least this is, not what, this is not what they say. This is not what the Mo Ibrahim, it is an achievement award, a leadership achievement award. This is the part about the legacy that, that, that I want to bring, up, bring about. Uh, when you look at, uh, at uh, the state of governance in Liberia, uh, one of the things that uh, George Ware said immediately when he took power, he said that I was left a broke country. So it means that he has been bequeathed mm. a broke country and the legacy 
of a broke country is what he has inherited, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. brings questions about the Mo Ibrahim mm -hmm. prize itself mm -hmm. and the content mm -hmm. of the prize. Mm -hmm. So there the, 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 the are questions around that. Mm -hmm. So is, is this, is this uh, um, is a prize around transformation of the lives of the African people, or is this some kind of cosmetic uh, uh, mm, mm, trophy mm. to be passed around. Right. Uh, I'm yeah, going to pass first of all to Dr. Usa and then we'll come back to you. I mean, you were there. You were actively involved. We were actually supposed to have a show on that same night, uh, but we were not able to do it. Uh, your thoughts on, on, on what the two gentlemen have talked about, the significance of this. Would this be what would make African leaders or leaders, wherever they are, to actually deliver to their citizens, having in mind that there's some prize from Mo Ibrahim? Well, I think if we see it from the perspective of accountable governance, um, whether we do it through the Mo Ibrahim indexes, mm -hmm. I will be specific, more than the award, yes. or whether we, we do it through um, our citizen report cards, mm -hmm. the fact that there is a sense of accountability mm -hmm. uh, from the citizens to the leaders is a core element. I, I would like to mention that um, for me, really, the prize if it's not tagged to, uh, to improvement of the lives of the people, then really it doesn't bring a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I w I'm, not, uh, I'm not a proponent of saying that uh, somebody will really ambitiously want to leave power because they have a prize to come. Mm -hmm. I think people would want to leave power because they have delivered to the mission or they believe that somebody is going to deliver better mm -hmm. to the mission. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the preoccupation, actually. If you're a good African leader, the preoccupation is less of the prize because you don't determine whether you will get the prize. Not, yes. We've had circumstances where there was no prize winner for a particular year. And therefore, uh, while Moy has his ambitions for the prize, I would not think an African leader should come to lead his people on the basis of of, or on the anticipation of the pride. Mm -hmm. They should come to power to serve uh, because of a particular mandate that they want to serve and improve the lives of the people. Mm -hmm. And when it's time that both the people and the leader deem it ready to leave and hand over to somebody else, that should happen irrespective. I think the biggest prize that you leave to, with your people is an improved life, a developed nation, and a peaceful nation if, right. if you are able but I know that it's a process for certain countries, and that process determines on who takes over and when whoever takes over takes over. Takes over the, 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 the reins of power. Dr. Avineza, mm. uh, this, this index, uh, uh, you know, on governance did point out that there is actually growing expectations for public delivery. This is actually what is going on. Citizens across the world, actually in Africa specifically, are actually demanding for public service delivery. When you sit as the opposition, what are the areas probably that you can point out and say, you know what, these are the areas where public service is failing on in delivering to the people of Rwanda? Well, maybe uh, since uh, Mo Ibrahim is more about Africa, perhaps we could start on the African level. Mm. Uh, I think uh, most of the African people they're lacking on what, clean what water. What if we talk about Rwanda? Okay. Clean water. Mm -hmm. Or what they call potable water. Mm -hmm. How many people have uh, clean water in Kigali? Very few. Uh, even, uh, e e even those who have uh, the pipes that would deliver the water uh, at their homes, how frequent does that water uh, get to their homes? I know many people in Kigali, including on my home, sometimes we get water once or twice mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. So basically, there's a problem of delivering clean water to the people. Even the city will have a challenge. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting to June, July, when the dry season, you'll find that even the jelly can of water will cross 500 francs. And even getting water will be a challenge. So this happens every year. So get, back, get to the villages in the upcountry, Butare, wherever, in those places, Mutala. In Mutala, uh, the eastern province, it's more, more terrible there because even uh, livestock uh, sometimes die, cows die uh, because of lack of water. Mm. And again, I would say that uh, there's a problem of a pro proper planning because we have these problems every year. Uh, which we need, the government needs to put up a mechanism to make sure that, uh, especially in places like in Eastern Province, mm. that because they know that it will happen, they should put some mechanism in, or some, some solutions in advance mm. to avoid such uh, problems. So, move away from water. Uh, electricity. 
how many people have electricity in the country? Mm -hmm. I don't have the figures. Maybe Dr. Ronzen has the figures, can tell us. But uh, I am very sure that uh, even in Chigari City, we have a challenge of electricity. Even breaking, breaking down sometimes. But leave, leave Kigali, go elsewhere. So there so are other issues. Electricity. Then there's uh, health care, mm -hmm. uh, access to health care. In Rwanda, we are a little bit better in healthcare compared to other mm. other places. Mm. But then there's quality of that healthcare. Mm -hmm. People who have the mutual do sante, do they get good health service? Not really very well. But perhaps that's part of uh, part of my manifesto. We are still working on that. Yeah. Go to schools. They talk now the word of mm. It's a quality education. Mm. It's a challenge in this country. Mm. There's no quality education. Well. I'm not saying there is no quality education. It's lacking. It's lacking. Dr. Lonzen, that question when I asked Dr. Avineza, in your mind, did you expect this is typical of any opposition party leader or person to actually say the same things? Is, is, this, is this what was right? No, I'm, I'm actually very disappointed in <laughs> Dr. Avineza. <laughs> it is a political party's gold mine. It is Christmas season. Mm -hmm. If he's able to tie what he's talking about, link it to politics. This is why he exists as the leader of the political party. If now the question becomes, why is it that it is unable, mm -hmm. he is unable, mm -hmm. or it is difficult mm -hmm. to transform these challenges that he says Rwandans are facing, and uh, uh, he's, he's partly right. Mm -hmm. But the question is, why is it that he is unable to make political capital out of these challenges. Mm. And the reason, he knows the reason, and that's why he's avoiding What it. is the reason? <laughs> the reason is that people understand, public service deliver, delivery in Rwanda, people understand that it inbuilt in it is a strong measures, mechanism for accountability. So now, when there's great mechanism for accountability, people understand the broader context within which services are delivered or not delivered. And that is why he's unable to produce politically out of these challenges. Mm. And that is why, basically what he's telling you is that even though, even if he had the power, he would be unable to do anything about it. No. That is what he's no, expressing. That's not, that's not correct, mm. Dr. Lanzi. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think he's <laughs> just a right the of reply. Just very briefly, <laughs> let me go back to Dr. Yusta. Mm. Yes, mm. Uh, I'm giving you a chance to actually rebuttal what Yes, he says. no, he's misleading the public. Mm. <laughs> because uh, a political party functions, like the political party in power, the RPF and its coalition, the, we can give them ideas and they put those ideas into action. We have no capacity as a party now to put our ideas into action because we are not in government or noise in parliament. But we can suggest ideas or they can borrow some ideas from our manifesto and put into true practice. So basically, me, I can only point out that there's a problem of clean water, but I, I cannot, I'm not the one to deliver that clean water. Government has institutions in the place to deliver that clean water, <laughs> but they are not doing it. Why maybe? Poor, poor, poor planning, mm. or uh, I think mostly it's about planning, but, poor planning. Uh, uh, and uh, again, I don't, uh, sometimes I, they say they don't have resources. I think resources are there, mm. but perhaps the poor misappropriation of the resources. Poor misappropriation. Uh, they I can mean, put Dr. them Yusta, somewhere where it's not necessary. These are very serious allegations he's mm. making. I, I want to hear from you from as a person who works actually uh, <laughs> on governance matters. Yeah, these are very serious allegations. It's misappropriation, uh, you know, poor planning. Why doesn't he turn them into votes? Uh, 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 Why uh, uh, doesn't he turn the disaffection mm -hmm. about the these mm -hmm. utilities mm -hmm. into votes. Yeah. We are not but in the campaigning uh, period now. Well, I want to start from where, um, when the current president, I mean, when, when the current government program was uh, was presented to parliament. First of all, do you agree with the things he said? I, I disagree, and that's where I'm going to come from. <laughs> the, my disagreement is when the prime minister presented the, the government, clearly who is going to facilitate the implementation of this program. Mm. The government is, a, is just a partner of the implementation. Mm -hmm. The civil society, uh, faith-based organizations, individual citizens, mm -hmm. and everybody. Mm -hmm. And w I think we should tie it even with a greater mandate that the world is in. Mm -hmm. Within the sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. we have committed that we are going to collectively move towards development. Mm -hmm. So while I realize that in public service, there's still a need to improve. Right. You know, last year the Prime Minister mentioned the capacities of the people who serve in public service, and over 30% lacked in their capacities. Mm. The consciousness and the capacity of knowing that there are those weaknesses 
preempts the need to actually uh, create capacity. So I disagree because um, I, I work with a lot of civil society and they do an amazing job mm -hmm. in providing water mm -hmm. to the people. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of partnership in development. There are many philanthropists that are partners in development in the agriculture sector and other sectors. So I think for me to make it just a, uh, uh, the, the political comfort mm -hmm. that people do not do it and you have somebody to say that it's their mistake for right. not doing it. Right. We are speaking about our friends, mm -hmm. our fathers, our mothers, Relatives. our sisters. Yes. Even and we cannot Sabi just, Sabi we cannot just make it a, uh, too much of a political talk right. and the absence of the space to deliver water. Water right. does not have a political affiliation. <laughs> it, it, it has no, it's not green, it's right. not red. Yes. It, has, it has a life-giving impact. Mm -hmm. And the capacity to deliver such goods, I think, this really Mo Ibrahim uh, uh, Governance Weekend spoke about the role of public services mm -hmm. in improving the lives of individuals and the lives of the people that we serve. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep it at that. Right. I think we all have a mandate to deliver to the people. To Listen, in, in, in Kenya just next door, mm. the opposition leader, Raila Odinga himself, shook hands with the president so that they can work together for the sake of the entire country. Mm -hmm. North Korea, South Korea now, they have a working relation with, with, despite all the disagreements they had. What is stopping you from going and saying, you know what, I want to work with you on these gaps. Would you do that? Well, uh, I think everything has its own uh, uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think at the moment we are not in the campaign mm -hmm. mode. Mm -hmm. So basically now uh, we, we are watching to see uh, the ruling coalition, which one, what are they doing, mm -hmm. uh, or whether they are delivering on their promises, and then we can put them, uh, make them accountable on their promises. Mm -hmm. So basically, let me say, uh, we of course will be in a, a But if I, may, if, I, if I may interrupt, uh, yes. what, what do you call a ruling coalition? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I know in the next few months people are going for, for parliamentary yes. elections. Actually, we're about to and talk I think about that. Okay. Really? We know the ruling coalition, madam. We know that uh, the parliament is still there. Uh, there was a, a RPF with its coalition partners who went into elections. Their mandate is not yet over. They still have some time to go. So basically, they have a big broken parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have coalition partners also <laughs> in the government, uh, which is PES there and uh, other parties. So basically, it's, it's uh, totally clear. It's an There's elected no... parliament. Mm -hmm. and no, so yeah, basically, no, RPF yeah. went into elections with the other six, seven parties. So it's a coalition. It's not a lie. Mm -hmm. I'm not lying. This is a, they are facts. Mm -hmm. So now, back to my point, <laughs> yes. is that no one, we are not refusing to work uh, together, together. To, to solve those things. To solve those saying. problems. Yeah. No, we are always ready. Uh, to work together with Rwandans to solve the problems, uh, if we are called to do so, oh, so but, but if we are not called to do, do so, it. if yeah. they are not called to do so, yeah. we have our Lord to pray, which we are always praying. Mm. So basically, right now we have actually been revising our political program mm. to suit it into the current uh, environment, mm. even of course of the upcoming parliamentary elections, mm. to make sure that we can respond properly to the uh, to the needs mm. and the problems of Rwandans. Mm. Mm. We are almost done. We are ninety percent mm. done with that process. Mm. So basically, mm. in a few months, you hear us with better ideas better for them. Idea. Better ideas. And what I'm, are going to do with these problems? Right, right. Let me hear from Dr. Lonza. Um, the president is a busy person. Mm -hmm. If I was the president, I would not give him the audience to, to meet and shake hands. Handshake. Yeah. The reason I wouldn't is this. <laughs> Raila was invited because Raila is able to link the disaffection faced by Kenyans, especially around corruption, mm -hmm. to votes. Mm -hmm. Raila has a block of voters and they have demands. And without... Him, without Kenyatta reaching out to Raila, the system in Kenya loses legitimacy. So un until the time that Havineza is able to link what he perceives to be a disaffection around public utilities into votes, if he's unable to make the political link between the disaffection, the president would be wasting his time to give him an audience. It, it, it just can't happen. It cannot happen. Yeah, he's busy. Do, do you think... As the opposition, he's doing what he says is what they're doing. I mean, no, if they're not invited, th they'll do that their job the of problem. actually... And, and uh, Dr. Eustace uh, pointed the issue. He needs to come out of the manifesto and come to, on the ground mm -hmm. and link the disaffections that actually I'm even going to concede some of the things that he said. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he talks about the challenges in public utilities, 
water, electricity, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, these are legitimate challenges, mm -hmm. legitimate issues, mm -hmm. and people are facing these difficulties. Now, mm -hmm. I am giving him advice because I like him. Mm -hmm. I'm giving him advice. He is there to link this disaffection to votes. Until he's uh, able to do that, uh, he will continue to be accused of living in a manifesto. So basically, she's telling him that he's, he's in, in, in a paper. You know, he's a paper. You know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't add uh, what else. Uh, if I was writing, I would have added. But, but, but the point is that, yeah, yeah, he will continue to be accused of living in the manifesto. Mm. He needs to come out of the manifesto, mm. identify this affection, and during the election, he identified something that I think was had the political mm. uh, legs, mm. but, but he was able, unable to push it. Mm. And that is the biggest challenge I have with Havinez and the Green Party. He's unable to link what he perceives to be disaffection, either because he doesn't believe they are disaffection, or if he does believe they are, why he is unable to link them to votes. Right. And at the end of the day, Dr. Usta, even as, as, as Dr. Lonzen suggests that he, he links that to votes, if we indeed have people who are going through what Dr. Avin is saying, they have a right to actually get what is rightfully theirs, access to clean water, yeah. access to electricity, good roads, education. So what sort of ownership to whatever he says? Is there any part where the government concedes and says, you know what, it's actually true, and this is actually, we are ready to actually work with you. Would you approach him and say, since you seem to know best some of those areas that you're saying, would you be able to do this? Is this something that can be done? Well, I think actually he, he's already part of, of the whole framework. You know, um, the Constitution of the Republic of Rwanda mm -hmm. believes in a very important principle. Um, prolistic consensual and dialogue mm -hmm. in terms of governing this country. Mm -hmm. I am sure you are a member of the, of the, of the Forum for Political Parties, and that's an, a forum that really engages on political matters of the country. Mm -hmm. So I think I am trying to find out, and this is how I have believed in the governance structure of this country, mm -hmm. you do not wait until the next time of going to the ballots to make an impact. Mm. At least the dialogue, uh, the consensus building, but also being able to act. You know, it's a, uh, Rwandans are now judging people for their actions. Mm. Whoever comes to power, that's very important. Mm. It's going to be very hard to wait to come to power and start acting. Mm. Mm. And um, people are partners. You know, the development journey is a people-centered thing. And that is not, a, a political party-centered thing. So for me, I think really that the point that um, I wanted to, to ask, beyond what you see, what prevents you from doing? Has the government ever phoned you building a borehole and said, no, you are the Green Party, you can't do that? <laughs> I would be happy to know that because when the government says this is what we want to deliver, right. even, even in my institution now, when I say I'm going to deliver on this in this particular year, we are in a planning period. Right. I say what the government is going to be able to provide, but I say what every other people are going to are be going able to provide. To provide. Right. And therefore, he has that space of being able to provide on some things that he passionately believes in mm -hmm. without necessarily being in the, in the life of his man. Right. He can leave his manifesto mm. not in a particular office. Right. Because the manifesto is the deliverables that you want to give people. You would give the, if to them broadly if you, if you took the, the government, but you could deliver each of those things to the extent that you can afford to deliver. Right. right. I think that was a very direct and straightforward question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you seem to be part of the people who are, are actually able to solve the problems you talk about, but you deliberately decide to say, oh, yeah, you know what, I, 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 this one is not mine to do. And, and she asked very clearly, is there anything you went out and said, we are trying to solve this in this area, and somebody told you, stop, because you are the Green Party? No, I think position. perhaps the problem is uh, uh, people to identify or to understand the role of political parties. Mm -hmm. Political parties are not civil society organizations mm -hmm. or uh, faith-based organizations. Uh, political parties form government. And the government think, puts into things into action. Government has institutions like, uh, let's say, Rema and others, Wasa and so on, but uh, uh, all ministries. Which, but the, the, those institutions under ministries are the ones who, which implement uh, policies. So the role of a political party is to make a policy. 
It's not to go to plant trees or to make a holes. That Those are the laws <laughs> of civil society organizations <laughs> or the government implementing agencies. Even the Democratic Green Party cannot plant trees. If we want, we mm. can. We, no one refuses us to plant trees, but it's not the law of a political party. Mm. We can do it if we want to do so for, an, for one reason or another, but it's not in the main, or even objectives mm. of our political parties, not mm. to go to plant trees mm. or to, but we can make policies that can lead to tree planting. Mm. Like only I, like when you're in we power, say, that's the only no, time even, you can make the policies. Now we, now we propose policies, mm. but we don't have them, the mandate to put our policies into action, mm. because those people who have <laughs> mandate are those the parliament or the, who can make those ideas and put it into laws mm. or mm. proposals into mm. policy mm. actions which can be implemented. Mm. So we can just, I suggest, write some press releases, but we cannot put, we don't have the capacity or the money to put them into action. Mm. So basically, that's what people <laughs> need to understand first. Right. Right. That, that a political uh, party is not an NGO or a company or a government institution which mm. won't that put things into action. Right. But at the moment, you know, maybe I would just like to tell, uh, to suggest or to advise the government right. why we have these problems with climate change, those landsliding, those uh, flooding, and so on. It's partly because of we have cut down most of our trees mm. and those trees which have been planted also have not been monitored mm. so we still have bare hills so government needs to encourage all the stakeholders mm. to plant more trees and you on cannot do that we yes, can sir. but we you say government should but advise because that, that's what i say political parties form government right so the political parties make policies mm. and then government puts those things into, into action people vote a party and the party forms government mm. and then the government makes has institutions mm and other stakeholders who can put those uh, ideas into action. Right. So this is what you need to understand. Right. So when I see uh, my fellow, land fellow here, Dr. Lozen, <laughs> suggesting that we should go there and plant or make bower holes, that's not I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. Uh, yes. Actually, mm. the problem is that you are behaving as if you should be digging bower holes. And the problem is that the a political party identifies a problem yes and it goes to the people and says you know you have this problem mm. because of these people in power mm. Mm. help me vote for me remove them in power mm. i'll fix this problem yeah. And this is where I'm telling you, you need to link the problems you are seeing in this society into votes. I agree totally yes. with you on that. Yes, and that is how you get the mandate you need to change these things. Mm. Yes. Until, unless you stop believing that you need to do things once you are in power, mm. you will never get the power needed to make the changes that you think you should change. Mm. Don't worry, we are mm. getting to the parliamentary uh, campaigns. Yes. Yeah. And actually, <laughs> we'll see how we link them. <laughs> well, we've actually been linked them for a long time. Mm. Yes. And, uh, but we are not in a campaigning period mm. now. Now mm. we're just giving chance to the government to see what they are, but we'll be in the campaign season soon. Right, mm -hmm. and talking of, 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 of parliamentary elections, actually, they, they're coming soon, uh, and, and, and I'm sure uh, that uh, there was a time when, 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 when there was an insinuation that we actually need to reduce the threshold uh, from, uh, is it 5%? Yeah, 5%. 5% to 2%. You want 2%. So, so you want 2%. Mm. Uh, even one well, would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> would, would they make it? <laughs> 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 That's my prediction. Do you no. think even if they yeah. reduce it to two or one, will they make it? 0 0.5. 0 point they, they may make it. 0 0.5, that's when they'll yeah, make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, okay. we, are saying, we are not scared mm. of the 5% threshold, mm -hmm. but we are saying that especially for, if you want independent candidates to be in the parliament, yes. you cannot treat independent, independent candidates as on the equal uh, threshold as political parties. As, as political That's parties. why we say that independent candidates should be given 2%. But even for political parties, we know, like I would give you an example of Sweden, it's 4% for parties mm. to go to parliament. Mm. It's not 5%. Mm. So why Rwanda should be 5%? We can reduce even from 5%. What's your thought, Dr. Eustace? Yeah. I read this, this, this tweets very quickly. What's <laughs> well, your thought on that? Well, I think that that's what the law says. We mm. have chosen 5%. But mm. the law can be until, Exactly. Mm. Until you have very good reasons for, for not having the 5%, mm. I think that's actually one of the things you're saying. That's how you inform, you inform policy. Right. We, it's the rule of the majority. Mm. And being able to get the majority mm. and serving with that kind of legitimacy is very important. Mm. So I think 5% is 
basically, you know, it, it, it does, it's not a mark that matters in many other places, but in this particular place, 5% is, is huge. Mm. And it's huge, but very small as well. So for me, I do not have uh, a problem with 5% at all. Um, I think the it's greens low. will, it, for me, it's really very it's small. Even small it's you have, you have right. to have okay. a greater let, 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 let me tell you why it needs to be made higher. Yes. Now, if you reduce to 2%, mm -hmm. you're going to have hundreds of briefcase political parties right. wanting to go in parliament. Mm -hmm. In fact, I may form my own political party if that happens. Mm -hmm. Because the chances of going to parliament, everybody will think that they can run to, par to parliament. Because, because the threshold will be yes. reduced. Right. So you need it to, in Rwanda, we do not lower the bar. We raise we the bar. Okay. Bar. That one is a good parting shot on that point. Let's but reduce to it very quickly. inclusiveness as well. I, I, inclusiveness. As you raise the bar. So they have to reduce or they include everybody? No, yeah. no, we are saying that for independent candidates... Let's have this conversation when we have a de de debate <laughs> on the parliamentary elections. That <laughs> one is coming soon and it will be very important. Let's read this tweet right up from a good friend, Jenny, uh, the Swedish ambassador in Rwanda. And she says, good debate, but for an outsider, quite an unexpected focus on the role of the opposition. Isn't it always the role of an opposition to point at issues they perceive as weakness and challenges? Hopefully suggest some alternative or solutions, but it's not mandatory to do so. This is what he says. I think, Dr. Lorenzen, uh, you seem to be pushing Havineza and, and Uster to actually offer the alternative, but he seems to have already done his part of pointing out those areas. It's not enough as mm -hmm. a political party. Right. He needs to do more. He needs to do more. Yeah. It's not enough. Right, let's, <laughs> let's have a look at this one uh, over here from Jean Bosco. Uh -huh. You've raised an important debate, but finally we need to move from plans to actions. A lot has been done, so we have to go on. If, uh, for example, any disaster that happened this year comes back next year, how shall uh, we call it? Dr. Uster, what do you have to tell this person? I think we, even the fact that we are trying to confront with the current disaster, yes. um, I hope there are not going to be many people still living in the, in the, in the, in yes. the disaster areas yes. that, are, that people have been found in, because yes. already some have been vacated, mm -hmm. and I don't see them going back. Mm -hmm. So. We are, if we are not more prepared as a government, I think that would be a, a big, big it time a big, problem. Big problem. But mm. uh, uh, there, there have been, less, been lessons down the road, mm. and there have been approaches actually to mitigate the disasters. Right. Dr. Avineza, next year, God forbid, we come back, there was another disaster, would you still be telling us the same thing? The government needs to plan and, and, and go on action. So what sort of deliberate steps would you be making to be part of this proper planning no, like let's say uh yes we talk about next year mm -hmm. let's say if we, we win uh, uh elections and be in parliament mm -hmm. uh we eventually sure five percent actually as you said it's very low mm -hmm. we can we have capacity to be, get more than five percent very good mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah so uh <laughs> we're hoping that you will be at that time in parliament we'll have put, we'll suggest uh, good policies mm -hmm. uh and make sure that all what has been planned is put into action mm -hmm. So we actually, as parliament, we advise government, but also make government accountable mm. that you have planned this, put it into action. You call out the minister and suggest where is the action for this, so that we don't face the same problem. So uh, you're trying to say airport. the current parliament is not doing that? No, I'm not saying. You have asked me yes. what I could be doing right. next year. So right. I'm trying to tell you. Yes. I'm not saying I've not done that. <laughs> I'm saying what <laughs> I can be doing, I, could, I will do next year. But, but as you're saying it, yes. you're saying so if you're elected, this is what you're doing. If we are elected yes. and, and uh, we are in the parliament, uh -huh. And we will be able to, to monitor the progress right. on the government actions right. and make sure that these actions or plans, whatever has been planned, is put into action. Right. The, the people living in right. those hillsides, right. they, are, they, they are settled in right. proper homes right. and they are, not, they are no longer living uh, in disaster uh, areas. areas. And now, then also, you, the yes. roads which yes. are being built without yes. trenches, yes. They are, they are, we should they make sure that we have, we have me, be fixed. Let me, let me tell you and the, the biggest... people in the northern province who always have the danger of suffering from those uh, big waters coming, we make sure that we, because the people, some of those people are still living, like in Basse, mm. in Ruhengeri, mm. they are living near the water Ayangu. shed. Let's hear from Dr. Lonza. Let me tell you the biggest challenge that uh, he faces right. and other political parties right. that are challenging the RPF. Mm -hmm. um, until the RPF becomes unaccountable, yes. they are going to have very, ma very serious difficulties uh -huh. linking the challenges that the RPF faces in its governance to change. Until the RPF becomes un unaccountable, mm. it's going to be very difficult for those who seek to replace it to link the challenges that it is facing in governance to 
uh, replace it, to right. replace the RPF. So it's going to be difficult. It's very, to do that. very difficult. Yes. I wanted to come back about um, the fact that as opposition he's doing his job. Mm. I, I wanted really to go back to our constitutional settings. Mm. Political parties in Rwanda are not constructed on whether they are in opposition or not. Mm. They are constructed on, their, on what they have to offer to the people mm. of a particular nation. So mm. I think really mm. the discussion mm. on by pointing out what the government is not doing mm. uh, as a standard of, an act, of the actions of a political party mm. is not what is constitutionally expected. Right. What is constitutionally expected is that when I seek registration as a political party, I have a, an ideology and an agenda that I have to offer to the people, mm. not necessarily on the it's basis of what the That's not in the Constitution. Giving. I think, uh, Honorable uh, Usta, you are saying it's not in the Constitution at all. The Constitution is very clear. It gives freedom of speech, freedom of expression, mm. and the Constitution of Rwanda gives pluralism, political pluralism to all political parties. Mm. There is no law. What, what I agree with is that there is no law saying that this is an opposition party or a government party. All political parties have freedom to have different ideas, different plan of actions. They may be, why, when they accept political pluralism, right. it means that their ideas are different. Right. From parties cannot have the same ideas. If they have the same ideas, then there's no need of more than one party. Mm. So I, I as, much, as long as we have different ideas, it means some, those ideas can conflict. But we agree on one principle mm. in the Constitution, it, it, consensus building. Mm. So we agree that we will not be confronting each other. We can re reach a place of having a consensus. Right, right. But, he, but what she said is not in the Constitution. What I said about the Constitution is that your political party is not constructed on the basis of opposing the other. Mm. Your political party it depends on what you want to deliver, mm. which is your pluralistic ideas, mm -hmm. which you might do, actually, uh, the, the constitutional process is you do it consensually and through dialogue. Mm. That's, a, that's a constitutional standard under Article 10 of the Constitution. Mm. So what I wanted to mention is somebody may not choose to sit in this country because mm. they, just they are opposition and they are pointing out what, what the government is not doing yes. and do not afford to make a difference in the lives of the people of Rwanda. Because the people of Rwanda are used to, whether you're doing it politically or not, to make a difference in, in their, their lives. lives. And that is the point I was trying to All bring right. out. I, 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 and, and I'm told we're actually running out of time. We have only one Anna, minute to go. We want to use it very well, Dr. Lonz. And actually, yes. we, we, we understand we have a surprise for you <laughs> because we actually close. Now, the reason we need to raise the bar Yes and ensure that political parties like Dr. Avinezas don't get a chance to come in the parliament yes. is because we think that the RPF is not being challenged enough. Yeah. So we need, the RPF actually may, may be underperforming and we don't know it. Yes. So we need we parties need someone to, that are serious. To, to over challenge yes. the RPF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And talking we of that, it was actually your, birth, your, your birthday yes. party just the other the, day. The thing was, on, <laughs> it was on Twitter. This yeah. is TV. <laughs> <laughs> stay, in, stay in your lane. Yes, your lane. I'm staying in my yeah. lane, but of so, course we yeah. just want to say we appreciate you. Yes, we have only one second to go. Of I, I, I appreciate. So Karibu Sana, just, 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 just yeah. have a so, munch. So, so, yeah. they, they, they need to challenge. They the need to challenge. But, but you yeah. said you want to, to they, vie for parliamentary. They need to challenge the RPF. You, you said you'll run uh, for Thank parliamentary. You hmm? You'll run under the. the this Green is my party. friend. Yes, yes. There you go. Patie, Patie, Atikikula. Yes, yes, yes. So if they make a mistake, if they make a mistake of reducing the bar. Yes. of lowering the bar. Yes. We are all going to create political parties. Mm -hmm. There are going to be all kind of chaos, yes. like uh, the, 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 those countries. But where why do we put up the a lot of spend candidates uh, when we cannot make brief case political parties mm -hmm. and the RPF is going right. to continue to not be challenged and not to live to its potential. We want political parties that are serious that are and able are to challenge to the, the RPF mm. to make it live to its political potential. D does the Green Party? No, it does not. It does not. All right. <laughs> so, so, so this conversation will actually go on, of course, as we munch the cake in celebration of Dr. Lonz and Rujira, who actually celebrated his birthday. How, how old are you, Tony? Um, a man of a certain age. A man of a certain <laughs> age. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. The conversation goes on, of course. Hashtag in focus RW. These conversations are very necessary. Let's keep talking. But for the you do not agree, uh, agree with him. No, we will actually continue this. Time. I wish we had the same time. We have the consensus. Always, it's Eugene. I gave you my cake. You have some cake. Let's have some cake. Some <laughs> cake. <laughs> Let's have some. <laughs> Thank you. No consensus. Ah, the cake is nice. Karibu sana.
Ron Dare, renowned for its tremendous ability to fulfill your dreams, invites you to connect more with your friends and family. In